right, hi, this is Katie Burns with Live Well, and today we are at Three Hills Farm with Debbie and Bobby Collier, and we are going to cook lamb. In another part of this episode, Ethan came out because I was a little bit under the weather, and you guys cooked a big leg of lamb. Yes. But today, we are focusing on lamb chops. Lamb chops. Okay, and so we're going to talk a little bit about the farm today. Farm to table, the importance of it, um, the importance of eating local. Go ahead and throw some on there. And cooking. How to cook lamb, because a lot of people don't cook lamb, but it is really delicious. I love lamb, so today is certainly a special treat for me. I'll let Bobby tell you about the cut of lamb, how okay. he has it cut. Mm -hmm. Hi there, I'm Ethan Lloyd once again, helping out with Live Well here on Channel 18. And if you're watching on Facebook or maybe YouTube, and still on the Collier farm talking about lamb, and along again, Mr. Bobby Collier at Three Hills Farm. Is that Three right? Hills Farm, that's correct. And now we've talked about all about the sheep production and how we want to take care of the animal, um, how, how they want to forage to, to raise. I can see some fat on these cuts of meat. You're going to go through the different cuts of meat, and then we can also see the importance to worry about bruising right here once we've got the meat in hand. Right. Right. Well, we've got several cuts of meat here, just a few that we brought out. And, uh, of course, these are our lamb chops, and more than likely if people went to a restaurant and they were eating and they wanted a cut of lamb, this would be the one that they'd like to get as a lamb chop. And... Uh, you know, as any animal, the, the marbling, marbling is in there, and you can see a little bit of flavor that'll add to it. But it is a very, very uh, healthy cut of meat. More and more, too, I was watching a show the other day where they were having a barbecue competition, and they were doing a shoulder. This is a shoulder roast here, and you can kind of see it's a fairly thick piece of meat, but they would take this and they would rub it down with whatever their special sauces or, you know, additives they wanted to put on it you know for flavoring uh, and do that so and that was kind of unusual because this is not this is not a real real expensive cut usually so but they were using that in a barbecue competition but what we're going to eat is a leg of lamb and you can see this is one and by the way this this lamb here is one that was totally grass fed on this we pulled him Actually, when we took him to the processing house, to the slaughterhouse, uh, we pulled him right off pasture. We didn't wait. He come right out and went right right there. This is the leg of lamb, and you can kind of see that's a, that's a pretty big cut. But now, if you get a leg of lamb, it may not always be this size. You may want to, this one still has the shank on it, so we could possibly come and take this shank off here, or we could come up here and cut this part off here and still have a roast up here on this. So... Just because you have this lard, don't let that be intimidating. It can cut to whatever size that you want to do it. So, and you'd have a good, good piece of meat here if you cut this shank off, and then you'd also have a good roast if it was here. So that's that's something that as we look at it, and and we're going to be eating a leg of lamb. What we did is Debbie fixed it, and it was fixed whole like this, and and she'll tell you how she done it. Well, I know I, I like you pulling out these roasts. Um, I know on live well, I've watched a lot of part of what she talks about keeping people's sanity in the home is being able to prepare meals with everybody's busy schedule. I mean, everybody's mm -hmm. busy. I, um, but we use the crock pot a lot. We, I don't even know how to turn one on. I'll, I'll confess to that. But my wife uses the crock pot a lot. And we, I love roast. And she yeah. puts all that in the crock pot in the morning and then gets her day going. And, and then we have a great meal. And it makes great leftovers. So we've even, when we've been having pork processed lately, keeping you know as many roast as possible so we love a roast i have never never had a lamb roast but i assume you would prepare it just like you would be for pork you can and, and a lot of times potatoes and onions yes but you can also with this you might want to add some spices or herbs to it herbs in in lamb does real well uh, rosemary is a good herb to use in there thyme eat ginger and then of course garlic and things of that nature along those lines can, and you can flavor it uh, depending on what area, a Mediterranean type a meal with this. And, and of course, lamb, sheep were big in that area. So you can use the herbs, spices they would use. 
Now, are there ribs? Is there much, much there for ribs? Or there are, but there's not as much meat on the ribs as it would be in, in the beef. And, and then stuff. is there cuts that you just go ahead and grind? like where There's we're... some that you would do, uh, uh, grind into to ground lamb, and then that would be what you would make a sausage out of. Okay. And then there is a, an Algerian sausage that is made, and I'm, the name is Merguetz. I believe is the way it's pronounced. I probably butchered that, but uh, we'll take it for this this project. But it the, all right. But anyhow, and and that has become real popular. And uh, it's uh, there's a spicing mix that you can actually. Uh, Patrick at Hummingbird Pastoria makes a lamb sausage that he mixes in with his other dishes that he does his specialty dish with lamb. And then uh, there's someone that we uh, purchased a ewe from. Uh, there's a farm in Pennsylvania that she sells packages of spices for the sausage and stuff, and that's uh, Misty Acres in Pennsylvania. So, uh, and they raise Cheviots too, by the way. So that's very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> Lamb chop looks similar to a pork chop or a T-bone. Yep. So just a little bit smaller. Yeah. These are three cuts that you, you'd be there, and like, like you said, there, there are more than this, but uh, these are the ones that you would be familiar with. And I like, I, I, I like lamb chops, I love lamb chops, but I'm also a big fan of leg of lamb. Now the lamb chops, just kind of grill them, treat them that, a lot like what you would a pork chop or a T-bone, is that kind yeah, of what? You, about the same, about the same. And again, if you wanted to marinate, uh, lamb marinates well with anything. Uh, and you know, again, fix it for your your taste, your flavor, and then after it's marinated, as it's cooking, you might even baste it uh, while you're cooking it, or stuff, or even a glaze. Sometimes you might want to do it. Well, and a lot of people like the herbs; uh, they'll use mint or mint jelly a lot of times with uh, with lamb. Well, now one thing in beef, and I'm like I say, I'm appreciating the lamb more and more as we go on. But uh, I, I like to say, you know. All you need for a good beef is a salt shaker and a flame. That's <laughs> uh, but so how would how would a lamb chop do with just that? Just a little bit of a little bit of salt and a, and a flame. Would that? It would probably do all right. But you're going to find that there's a different flavor with a lamb than there is with beef, and so the herbs will add enhance that flavor on that. So I would recommend doing it with some herbs and stuff. Okay, good deal. Well, all right. Okay, so you guys just watched, you saw the um, frozen meat and the different cuts of those. And um, just to recap, this is a thick kind of meat. These are thick legs. Would you say, how, how, how thick do you think these are? Uh, about, uh, three, quarters. three quarters thick, in case you can't hear him. He's not mic'd today. Um, and now, what, what all is in this, Debbie? So what I have done for this is the way my family likes it is to make brown sugar on the lamb. So nice. I have got rosemary oil with it. I have got black pepper oil. We have used uh, the brown sugar. And just for giggles and kicks, we threw some pineapple juice on it. Bob loves anything with pineapple on it. So yeah. today I've threw some pineapple and some pineapple juice. I marinated mm -hmm. it last night till this morning. We're going to cross our fingers and see how it tastes. I'm anxious to try it. Now, Debbie, how um, did the name Three Hills Farm come about? I'm going to let Bobby field that question for you. No, you're not going <laughs> to cook and talk at the same time. <laughs> I'm going to tell you're you a really different <laughs> story than Bobby is, I'm sure. So I'm going to let Bobby do it because actually the name started even before we were married. Yeah. Uh, Bobby acquired property from um, the adjoining farm that was sold to adjoin his parents farm and by the time I met Bob he already had 40 acres that's what he initially Did you got that as a senior yes senior in college right I mean that's pretty impressive that you have that kind of a big dream to start at that level well we uh, always thought well we need to have a farm name mm -hmm. and uh, when you look from the west toward our farm daddy's mother's property right. had three prominent hills and it so happens also that the uh, acreage that I bought that joined them had three prominent hills. And actually, that's where the name comes from. Three, three Hills, hills farm. farm. Is that acreage had three prominent hills. And, uh, now, on one of those hills uh, sits a couple of chicken houses. Uh -huh. On the other hill is a hay field. 
And on the other heel, the third one, is a wedding site that uh, Sarah used as a wedding site when she got married. Oh, now see, that's so special when your children can get married on your farm. Yeah. It was the same site Bobby proposed to me on. What? Yes, so all the kids actually have had their weddings on the same site Bobby proposed oh to me on. Oh my goodness, that's so romantic. So that was uh, I, I, Bobby. I, I'm that kind of guy. Yeah, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty proud we don't have that one in picture since we were out checking cows that day. But uh, And he just, he just felt it. You just, know, yeah, right there. Right I'm there. surprised David didn't propose while we were checking cows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, if he talked with Bob, he may have picked he up may have that as a pointer. It. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's not anything that uh, is Facebook worthy, actually. Right, <laughs> sure. But you know what? It did the trick. We've been together 30 some odd years, so we're good to go. That's with amazing. It. I love hearing stories about the longevity because it's so rare. It is. In this time. Okay, so I want to mention um, you put in the rosemary oil. I did. With from, this. Now, that comes from a pier, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. We have a business on the side that we partner with a natural health revolution and a mm -hmm. company and one of their products are oils. They are called a mayo oils. Here's the rosemary. So our rosemary oil is what I use. I use our oils anytime I can to incorporate them into our cooking. Mm -hmm. So um, for this dish today we do have the uh, rosemary oil in this. We did some apples and the apples you know you talk about it's so important to know where your food comes from. Yes. So Woodens Orchard <laughs> went up and got Best some apples. Yes. But we actually, this is the end of the Mutsu apple that we okay. had here. So I did that and then I put them in some orange oil mm -hmm. and some cinnamon oil. And Yum. they are just cooked in a little bit of butter with a little bit of sugar. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we just bought some local broccoli to go with this today. That's great. So and we'll see. What I'm drinking right here is peppermint tea. And I arrived here a little smoked. And um, <laughs> he's a little bit behind the camera. And anyway, so she made um, some put some peppermint oil in the tea, and it just really helped. Uh, so definitely enjoying that, Debbie. Right. Um, a lot of the things people don't understand about essential oils—they've hit the scenes as like something new. But essential oils were around uh, basically before Jesus. You know, you right. go back into the old times of um, maybe Hippocrates. Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's like several years, years before Jesus, but they are also used in the Bible. I think us selling the oils has really gave us a better appreciation for what oils were used in the Bible when people right. were anointed and things like that. You know, you kind of like understand what that means now. Right. You know, when they say, well, that was an expensive jar, you understand why that was an expensive why jar Why it was a oil. special right. moment. And so I think the oils are just really basically us getting back to nature. There's mm -hmm. nothing new about it. It's the way God intended it all along and it's just right. way that we can integrate it into our life. Well from what I know about oils is a lot of people were using them um, as aromatherapy. Mm -hmm. um, right. what, are, what is one of those machines? A diffuser. A diffuser. We actually Thank I you. have a couple diffusers going in the house today okay. and so one of the oils that I have going is um, an immunity boosting oil. Okay. So um, it has some cloves in it, it has some cinnamon, it will help boost your immune system just from breathing it. Since uh, you had the cold and everything while you were outside, I threw a little bit of eucalyptus <laughs> in there to I wonder why I was up. feeling so much better now. <laughs> yeah, to kind of clear you up yeah. a little bit. Um, what you have to really be aware of mm -hmm. in using aromatherapy is the quality of the oil. You right. really have to have confidence in your company and who you're buying the oils from. Yeah. You don't want to just like... Um, Go to the store or, and find oh, This looks good. It's pretty. It oil. smells good. Yeah. And you know, that's all well and good, but your skin is the largest organ of your body. And our oils are cell permeable. We mm -hmm. have it on um, in our office that we can show you any bottle you look at, you can go and you can look it up. Yeah. You can see where it permeates the cells and the cell wall. So I never realized all that. I'm, I was that, oh, it smells yeah. good, want it on me kind of thing. And I've really just kind of turned my way of thinking around since we've came out with the essential oils. Right. So the essential oil line in this company came out two years ago. Mm. So um, I've tried to really learn a lot about it since then. Yeah. So. And so uh, why are you guys so passionate about health? I think the, the biggest part for me when it started for me was about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And just as a medical social worker, I was seeing an influx of the patients that we were getting. 
and they were younger. And some of that was like, okay, I'm getting older, so am I getting older? And they just look <laughs> younger. But when you really just went across the board right. where you used to see 80, 90 year olds come into um, healthcare facilities, mm -hmm. you were seeing 50 and 60 year olds come into healthcare facilities. And that wasn't just Bledsoe County, that was a trend across the no, state I of know. Tennessee I and in the nation. There's been articles about it now. Absolutely, I see that you know in our cardiac Right. Rehab, you know, we're having 30 and 40 year olds. Right. It was said that um, in one of the books I've been reading um, that uh, the people, that the generation now will be mm -hmm. having their heart attacks at the same time their parents will. That's a scary thought. And that all links back to our nutrition. That all links mm -hmm. back to what, ha what we're putting in our bodies. Mm -hmm. And so you know, our passion, my passion became when I started seeing this and I realized that this was their life. You know, I could walk away from it every day. These people had to stay there day in, day out. I said, you know, I want to see if there's something I can do different. Right. So I just started researching, looking around. Uh, actually, a friend of ours had approached us a couple years before this about the Maringola Fair product with mm -hmm. Zija, and we politely ignored him on Facebook, like good friends do. <laughs> and so then I had a girl that was local that started selling mm -hmm. it, and so you know, I called her, and I said, yeah, let me try it. So I tried it, and at first it kind of gave me a little bit of heartburn. I was like, good, can cancel that. I don't have to do that. And um, the guy that just became a really close friend of mine that was a physical therapist that was in our company said, just dilute it a little bit more with water. And so once I did that, you know, I take no medicines right now. That's and amazing. yeah. In what a, were you, do you mind sharing yeah. what were no, you no, taking? No, I was on, okay. uh, I had reflux and a hiatal hernia. And uh, you know, that's for a, That's us, very painful. Yeah, for us, it you know kind of started. I started seeing those health benefits. Mm -hmm. Bobby was watching me take it, and he was like, "Well, I think I'd like to do that." So, right. you know, uh, Bobby's always my guinea pig on anything that I bring in. So, as any good husband, as any good husband. <laughs> but ours started showing up in labs. Um, I mean, I can't t say that that will happen for everybody. Right. But you know, if your cholesterol's high, you don't get up and say, "I feel like my cholesterol's high today." You don't know some of this stuff is actually going on inside your body right. until it, you know, it's too late. So well, there's just not a lot of proactivity. No, a lot of people, you know, they hit the wall or they hit a fire, and it's all of a sudden I have a problem. Right. Instead of focusing on their Proactive. health now, right. you know, even even with stress. Mm -hmm. Stress is right. such a major um, health issue for people that flies under the radar. You can just mm -hmm. pretend stress isn't affecting your body and just pretend it's, it's, not, yeah. it's not hurting your heart. You know, I just had a, a patient that um, literally had a stress-induced heart attack. Mm -hmm. So if you're suffering from stress or other things, what oils do you like to use for that? We have one called Pure Tranquility right here, mm -hmm. and one called Calming Breeze. And I'm going to wash my hands because okay, I have lamb, I'm a, lamb juice. We'll on. use her nice assistant. This is Calming Breeze. Uh huh. And if you will uh, just open it up, and you can smell it. Um, I recently, oh. went, yeah, I recently went through the death of my mother, and prior to that, there was nine weeks of intense hospitalization. No, I kept that with me. Term. I just kept that and the pure tranquility with me just to kind of oh, keep yeah. my nerves. Like I said, it it did what it needed to do for me. Mm -hmm. Now, see, this this says something on here that a lot of others I haven't seen say. Like, and you just mentioned a minute ago where you said cell active and permeable. Right. A lot of other bottles that I've run across. Um, I mean, it's not going to show up on camera because it's in tiny print. I'm just showing you guys the bottle again. Um, don't say that. Can you? Talk again about what that means and why it's important. Well, we have what's called the certified difference. And so we look at five different areas. Um, mm -hmm. When we went into the essential oil business, we knew that there were some very, very good essential oil companies out there. So you don't go into it just to say, well, we have something too. You because have to go that into can, it. That can be hard. Everybody's right. into their type right. of oil. Right. So what Dr. Plant did is that he had... And you know it's above me because he is like a Harvard PhD kind of person mm -hmm. so I just kind of know what happens if you look at the bottom of the bottle it's going to tell you if you go to a mayo.com you yeah. put in that number at oh, the bottom I see it. yeah at the turn it upside down right there you put that in it's What's going to show right you there? where that that has went in you can see all the testing that was done all the sourcing the testing everything that was done on that bottle use your math on it Which one said again? Use your date that it was made on that. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's nice. It has the date. 
So you know it's fresh. You know, you know what you got. By the way, this smells so good. Good. I was going to let Bobby taste it because I do not eat lamb. Um, just for you the just fact sell it. I just sell <laughs> it. Um, this lamb is for sale. We just did an episode, and you guys will have to be sure and look in your guide for it called Here on the Farm. And we visited um, with Bobby and learning about the sheep, the Cheviot breed, where this lamb comes from. And they're really known for their mutton. Right? I can say it like that, can I? No? no he's not going to let you. <laughs> no? He's going to let you. Oh. I could have told you that. the older. The older way? The older, older sheep. Okay. And what you want to be getting is to go to a store and buying lamb. Okay. Buying lamb. Yeah. Lamb is around about 12 months old. Yeah. Okay. For some breeds might be a little bit older. Right in there. And uh, the good thing about lamb is it is a healthy meat. Uh, it is one of the main meats in the Mediterranean diet that a lot of people will eat. That Mediterranean diet, I don't know if you guys are familiar with. You want know, more well, protein, iron. Protein, iron, and it is... Uh, fruits and vegetables. Fruits mm -hmm. and vegetables on those. It is one of those diets that uh, there's not many heart problems, cardiovascular I'm problems. Gonna, I'm going to look and see if he wants me to cook it just a little bit longer because it's a little bit pink still. I like mine on the pink side. How, how, okay. what, what do people that eat lamb, do they I, go I, for that? I, I am just the cooker. So... I like it that way. Okay, I will just keep turning until you all tell me you are ready for it to be pulled off. I think it's perfect. What do you think? It's good. Does it need any salt or anything? Pretty good. All right. It's very tender. And all we've done is, I mean, you marinated it. Uh, the only thing I put on the marinade was olive oil. I didn't do, do any kind of special marinade. Um, I like the pineapple. Yeah, Bob, you know, if Bob can put pineapple on anything, he's going to. <laughs> I would have not have thought to put pineapple with lamb. Um, and, and Bobby and I were talking about earlier is, is that lamb has kind of become the new thing to eat. If you want to have a fancy dinner, if you're serving for a party, you bring out the lamb because it's, it's really hard to find. Actually, if you go to a grocery store here, uh, you may not find American lamb. You're not going to find local. You're going to find yeah. New Zealand or Australia. Right. And uh, Debbie and I think that we can provide lamb a little bit cheaper than what the Australians or New Zealand people can. And, and we think we're closer. I don't know. I don't know. It, it tastes so good. It, it, I mean, I haven't had lamb this good in a while. And I do like to order lamb when I go out to some of the restaurants. I know that the Hummingbird Posteria mm -hmm. on Signal serves this. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't made it to that place, but... Um, a lot of the times they're really having to dress up their lamb, and this isn't overly dressed. No. This no. in of itself is a meat that tastes really good. And what you're eating with this, this lamb chop here is, mm. specifically this lamb down. was 100% grass fed. Oh. There's, there's not grain in them. No, no, no. take it in. Yeah. You can take it into the camera. Let's see, let my camera person tell me when I got a good shot. Yes, good. Hi, Facebook. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Okay. So okay. One hundred percent grass fed. Yeah. And Bobby, why do people like that? Well, there's there's a trend now that you may say people want non GMO right. products on their land. And the one way that I can guarantee non GMO, you know, mm -hmm. not genetically modified. Right. Uh, is with grass. Mm -hmm. And so that's a safe way, and if, and if people want that, then I can do that because any of the grain that we have in the United States, there's no evidence that that's bad for us, Right. but some people want that. And so you try to get what the customer wants. I know, and if, if I repeat a little bit, it's just because he's not mic'd, and I want to make sure that you guys are hearing that at home. It's that a lot of the customers are wanting the grass fed because they're wanting to stay away from GMOs. Yes. Now, does anyone ask you to grain finish? Uh, some mm -hmm. we do, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have some in, you know, that we ourselves, that we have, we use. Uh, Is there different. one that you prefer? Really not. That's okay. the good thing about this. That is good. So with, with this uh, and this lamb, mm -hmm. him being 100%, he is just as well and well marbled 
as anything that we've ever raised. I think that's a characteristic of the breed too. That's a characteristic of the breed. It's not so. true across the board. I don't know that for all the lambs. Yeah. I did mm -hmm. put honey on this too. Let me, um, when I marinated it, I put a little bit of honey in it love just honey. for the sweetness. Y'all know and I that love was honey. for um, from Ronnie. <laughs> Collier has some um, bit hives. So we try to get our stuff locally as much yeah. as possible. And so Ronnie had made some honey. I don't know how you make honey. I don't know what the proper terms are, but he brought us We some. need to go out there. We need to go to a honey farm. Yeah, you do. I, I, I have no idea what they do, but... Uh, Call us. Let us know, honey. Yeah. Honey. You have, uh, honey you have several that rate, have hives in Apiary. Bledsoe County. A what? Apiary. There you go. Apiary. See, there's <laughs> technical terms. Well, I he, he, an ag teacher. I I got that right. Yeah. yeah. Ag teacher um, has. Okay, so we have some apples. Do we, we want to show those? Yeah, all the apples. Uh, yeah, I think they're beautiful. done. All they, all I've done is just cook. Do you them. have a hot pad? I'll walk it over. I will give it to you. It's right beside you. In here, In drawer. Yeah, nice. just grab one of those. Okay. And so those are just from the Woodens Orchard, which is actually closing this week. I don't know if the other local yeah. orchards are open closing or not. Season. Huh? Closing for, apples. closing for the season. Yes. Now there's the orange in here, and what else? There's orange oil. There is cinnamon, cinnamon. oil. Uh, there's just some butter and a little bit of sugar. We try to really cut down on our sugar now. Bob, yeah. um, I don't know if he said anything about being a diabetic, but that's just one of the things. And we, that's one of the this reasons is, that we try to just really watch everything. Okay, bye. Yeah, I this is Diabetic in. Awareness Month, Thanks. right? It is. Yeah. That's what I've read. And so this is a way for you to get a sweet flavor without those added sugars, because I know that's really important right. to our right diabetic patients we did away with anything that was like high fructose mm -hmm. we've done away with hydrogenated and a lot of that i learned with this company i did not know mm -hmm. it before i joined the company mm -hmm. and um, just learning the better health habits that's exactly it. that's all our company really focuses on is yeah. just you being able to live life unlimited because you integrate some healthier habits into your life oh yeah, yeah. and i i use no <clears throat> artificial sweeteners whatsoever mm -hmm. right that's very important. And, you know, let me tell you that a lot of my diabetic patients. Coke drinkers. Well, Diet Coke drinkers. And they can't give it up. Mm -hmm. Even with the diagnosis, they can't give it up. Uh, now, are you on medication? Uh, metformin. Okay. Um, Not insulin. Not insulin. Which is good. Metformin. Well, they will be on it. They will be on insulin because mm -hmm. they can't give it up. So, you know, it's really um, to be commended. That you've been able to get rid of some of those artificial and sweeteners. The other thing to do, we live an active lifestyle. Try to. As farmers. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Most of I don't know. have a choice. I don't know how I can sit still yeah. when you have a farm. I know one of the things I think that, that is so important and what I saw, and one of the things that really convicted me to start looking is just the fact that the mentality that you see it just across the board. I'm not talking about with my job or anything like that, mm -hmm. but just when you go in and you run into people and like you said, they know they're diabetics, but they can't give it up. So right. they're doing this and you know, you're like, all right, you, you've got to stop this, uh -huh. you know? And so we have excellent doctors in our County. I think uh -huh. we have some of the top doctors, but I think you have yeah. to take, you have to own up to your own health too. I know so many people will say, and um, you know, I did an episode about this where they say, I know what to do, mm -hmm. but I can't. Mm -hmm. And I think that that can't word is a real barrier for a lot of people. It is. And they um, just, sometimes you just really got to step out. You, you got to step out of your box and step out of your comfort zone and, but it's and hard go to for do. it. It is. It's very hard to do. Do you know, you know, given all of your wisdom and experience, do you know any ways that it's clicked for people that you've ever encountered that they said, I'm going to change my lifestyle? You know, sometimes when it really hits people is when they've had some kind of major event, right. either of themselves or watching a loved one go through it. Um, I don't, I think that just has to be a personal decision mm -hmm. and they just have to make it work for them. Personally, for me, I think one of the hardest things was when you're raising your children and you have ball games to go to. So you work all day, you get in a car. I think we talked about this on the last episode. You drive, 
to the ball game. You sit on a bleacher. Yeah. You get back in the car. You drive back home. You're exhausted. And it's late. It's late. Exhausted. You did not get your heart rate up any except for climbing up and sitting down on the bleachers. That's it. <laughs> with your nachos and cheese. <laughs> and I don't knock that because that's that's what you know you do to be with your family. Mm -hmm. And so it's just trying to really, it's a juggling act. And I really feel sorry because that's where we were for so long, just trying to be everywhere that we could be. So. Right. You just have to make those commitments to try to just do little things every single day. Right. And I think that if you have an idea of mm -hmm. wanting to help yourself in those hard times, like you said, you know, with your mother and taking this oil with you, you are purposely trying right. not to let the stress of that take you right. down with it right. because it can so often those caretakers mm -hmm. go right down they go down faster and and after you know after the loved one you know passes then they very right. quickly have a hard time getting out of bed mm -hmm. and they can't go on but you really have triumphed you've carried on 